<laughs> Let's cut right to the chase. Two trademarks for Code Fairy were filed by Bandai Namco on September 25th in English and Japanese, while a Europe registration was done on September 29th. All of these are obviously 2020 dates. So the first thing you might say is this doesn't mean anything. You're right, but let me explain. It's the start of a new year, right? 2021. And by June of this year, that will make it three years since we had the initial date that they announced the release date for Code Vein, that being June 4th, 2018. And on that day is when they announced the release date of September 28th, 2018. Fast forward a year later, that makes it two years since its actual release date, September 27th or 28th, 2019. I'm talking about its release date announcement just because it's funny. The way that they hyped up the date to announce the release date just for it to get delayed was on some Cyberpunk 2077 meme shit. So I thought that was funny. There's a few reasons why I wanted to make this video, you know, be even though it doesn't exactly mean much. And I'll be honest, I'll just be honest, right? Seeing code attached to Bandai Namco triggered me, you know? It started making me think. But past all that, it's a topic that I am curious about. Think about it. What is Shift, the creators of Code Vein? doing what are they making right now what's going on they stepped away from the guider franchise for three right had somebody else make it and i don't know if you ask me it seems weird to step away from a game a franchise that you've focused on for years just to make one singular different game and come right back right i don't think that would make sense while ps5 and the next generation is obviously here ps4 games are to this second and then this second and then this second are still in the works and will release either this year next year i would argue 2023 but regardless two to three years out from now we can still expect to see native ps4 games i would think after that is whenever you can expect some ps5 xbox series x games that are only available on those platforms and that's not even mentioning the whole concept of backwards compatibility that is across the board so there is no negative aspect no negative outcome by still releasing games on ps4 right and so the second reason that i want to talk about this is based off the success of code vein youtubers like myself and the soulsborne community who were interested in this game based off of you know how it was marketed are the real reason this game was so successful from the day they dropped a teaser trailer before they even talked about soulsborne i will say and add there was so much excitement so much attention brought to this franchise this series this new ip i had a video on it you know on that teaser and the main reason why I was talking about it was because I was a God Eater fan. So that alone was a shock to me. I'm like, wait a second, behind the minds of God Eater and they already have all these people's attention. What is about to happen? The last time Shift had this much attention on something they were creating was God Eater Resurrection. And the thing is with that, that wasn't even a new creation. It was just a remaster. And honestly, the reason why this remaster was so ex hyped up, I guess you could say, was from the anime. The God Eater anime was so well done, so well animated, top tier animation. It's on some, it was on some Demon Slayer type shit in the sense of like just garnering a mass anime fan base for the franchise. And that's why Resurrection was so hyped up and liked. So the game dropped September 27th, 2019. And by February, 2020, they announced that the franchise Code Vein hit 1 million total sales. New IP, anime-esque touch, 1 million? Bandai Namco? Not an anime show based game? That's pretty freaking good if you ask me, but let's put some context behind that. Astral Chain, Nintendo Switch exclusive, hit 1.0 mil copies, which the developers said outperformed their expectations. New IP, Platinum Games developed, kind of anime looking, you know, not entirely, but it definitely doesn't look that Western. And then published by Nintendo, so it is a Switch exclusive. Let's not act like Switch exclusives and console exclusives don't sell crazy numbers. So that shouldn't even be a part of the picture. That shouldn't be a problem, you know, since Covain is multiplayer. I don't think we care. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, new IP, known developers this time around, 
topped 5 million sales. And the last one, which I think speaks to Code Vein, at least the situation that we're discussing today, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. New IP, not so much anime, right? And, and honestly, it is a double A game disguised as a triple A game, but nonetheless hit 1 million sales and has a sequel on the way. Overall, it feels like if there is something more going on with one Code Vein and two Shift, we will most likely hear about it this year. Or there's a high chance, maybe not most likely. Cause you know, I feel like a lot of things were supposed to happen last year, but COVID just stopped it all. So at this point, nothing is set in stone. So switching gears a little bit, we've had multiple talks about the connection between God Eater and Code Vein. Uh, but at this point, I sort of regret making that 20 minute long theory video because I don't even believe it anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the thing is, the dev said that there isn't a connection to begin with. So I don't know. The DLC to me proved that the appearance of DS Pita and all the other little tidbits of God Eater lore sprinkled throughout Code Vein was just for fun. That's what the DLC showed me. Not only just for fun, but also to cut some corners. Rather than thinking up brand new monsters, putting some new design behind these horrors, they're just like, why don't we just reuse our other ideas to save some time and some money? Think about it. The Deluxe Edition Season Pass, all those things were known before the game released because at the end of the day, when you were trying to buy Code Vein, there was a Deluxe Edition sitting right there. Meaning, they had planned, maybe even some development was made for this additional content before the game even came out. And that's also putting into perspective that the game got delayed a whole year. Let's not even talk about the lackluster nature of that DLC. So it was obviously quick and, and, and not actually thoroughly thought out planning, <laughs> if we're being honest. Each piece was $20, yet the actual value was worth like $5. Seriously. Highway robbery, bro. Look, look, the way I see the DLC is the way when you buy Lay's chips, you're buying air and it just comes with a side of chips. We was just buying something that had the name Code Vein splattered on it, and I guess we got a little bit of content to come with it. <laughs> if there was a true connection, a true reason for them adding all of the, again, all of those tidbits, because there was a decent amount, I think that one, they shouldn't have told us there was no connection. They should have just not said anything, okay? To not spoil. And then two, they should have done a better job at make, building that connection. Because like I said, the DLC doesn't build any bridges in fact it starts breaking the bridges the way that they were structuring these horrors and the way that we were still able to fight them it just didn't add up with the whole timeline of god eater and code Vein. so it just it just isn't a thing so when i saw the name code fairy it really 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 had my brain thinking i'm like is this them saying oh wow okay that kind of one-off project we wanted to just explore with is successful let's now flesh out the backstory and make it make more sense or maybe they're like gonna go years in the future after we've left the red mist and you know fairies or some shit like that that's kind of what i was thinking as well but in terms of the core details of how i think the story could go the gameplay could be effective those kind of things for a sequel i already did actually have a conversation with two other people from in my community obviously code vein fans where we discussed those deep details so peep that video if you are interested uh, i want to do another type of video like that it was called squad chat where i pull in some of you guys and we discuss topics like this so uh let me know if you guys did enjoy that if you do go back and watch it come back here and let me know uh, so let's do that again but other than that man i'll keep you guys updated in what i see and what i know what i hear about a covain sequel because like i said i think based on how it was successful based on how it performed everything warrants the idea of a sequel so it's not out of the picture it's not foreign to think that it's not foreign as well to start the conversation in 2021 so like i said i'll keep you guys updated be sure to subscribe leave a like comment and uh, other than that i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you all in the next video peace